But uh, shall we shall we rotate to wide receivers? I like to rotate. Why don't you tell me uh, a wide receiver that you're excited about this weekend? Oh, baby. I didn't know you had moves like that. Rotation. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, how can you not like Allen Robinson? Um, great matchup against, against the Vikings. Mitch Trubisky looks for him all the freaking time. Uh, when, when he's playing, uh, Robinson coming off a, a really good week where he didn't even have to do anything in the second half because they were winning by so much. Um, still put up a nine for one twenty three and a score 13 targets. Uh, since, since Mitchie has come back, he's been targeted 13, seven and 13 times, uh, after not being targeted in double digits, the previous six, five weeks. Um, so yeah, I, um, I mean, Allen Robinson, great matchup indoors, Minnesota. Um, I know that that's probably somewhat obvious but we did talk weeks ago um again go to our website the fantasy football com. there's kind of a um you know one of the articles posted is playoff schedule and the bears just have a great playoff schedule like you saw it starting last week against houston um you're gonna see it continue this week against um against minnesota so um he's one guy um I would love to start Brandon Ayuk um, this week. I, I think he's going to go for a, a potential long rushing touchdown of some kind or like a screen pass touchdown. Huh? Um, Who? B- Brandon Ayuk. Oh, uh, uh, against okay, Dallas. Okay, sorry. I thought we were still on the Bears, but then you totally just were like, and Brandon, I, okay, all right. Oh, I, yeah. yep, I wanted um, to talk a little Bears with you. Oh, let's, let's do it. Um, Say that the Bears run the table against the Vikings and Jaguars and end up playing the Packers in week 17 for a playoff spot. Do you think that Nagy and Pace have done enough to keep their jobs for another year and Mitchell Trubisky for that matter? Do you think that they bring, get the band back together? I hate you. (laughs) I'm just saying, right? They could very easily beat the Vikings and Jags end up trying to play for a playoff spot. and. Is that enough? I don't want to Do have you to re-sign? listen to my Packer friends boot us from the playoffs one more time. No, um, it's a it's a good question. Um, I, I think they made a critical error in starting Foles as long as they did. Um, Trubisky has actually been okay. Um, you know, when he actually plays, um, you know, if, if if you look at what his stats are for the season, he's got 13 touchdowns, five five picks in what eight games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So like that's a that's a twenty-six and ten over the course of a year, which isn't great. Um, but I I I will call this now. I think Mitch is gonna be hopefully a lot like Tannehill, where hopefully he kind of gets a new lease on life, uh, goes somewhere where there's better coaching. Um yeah. and, and I'm and I, yeah. I'm not comparing Nagy to Adam Gase, but um I mean, why not? They're his off Nagy's offense is, is brutal, but they have been a lot better since he stopped calling plays. So, um, so yeah, Alan Robinson, uh, any more bear stock or, or shall I keep going? No, that's fine. L- tell me more about Brandon. Ayuk. So I would know Debo in the lineup. I, I don't know how you can't start Brandon. Ayuk if you have him this week, um, he, he's clearly the number one guy there. Um, and the the way that they play, and we talked about their misdirection before the snap, they just find ways to get the ball into playmakers' hands. We talked about Dallas' defense being slow. Um, when Debo doesn't play, it seems like everything funnels to Ayuk. Ayuk's had double-digit fantasy points each of his last five games that he's played in. Um, great match against Dallas. Um, I'm starting Ayuk as as probably a wide receiver one this week, or that's where my expectations are. Um, just because I I think he gets to it or is at least close. I like it. Um, I think that he's a stud. Now there is one talking about Twitter earlier. We did run a Twitter poll. Um, something that um, I'm interested in is. Who do you think is the wide receiver one in San Francisco next year? Do you think it's Ayuk or do you think it's Debo when he's healthy? I think it's, I th- it's still a healthy Debo. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Is it is it really George Kittle? I mean, can Kittle please stay healthy for 16 games? <laughs> That'd be nice. I mean, that's, that? that's the question, right? I mean, you're still taking him as tight end two next year um, with a big leap of faith that he's going to stay healthy. Where do you think he falls to? Do you think you can get him in the third or the fourth? I would be, I would be surprised if he makes it out of the second still, honestly. Yeah. The, the tight, like, you just got to swing for it. Like, I think his value is like we we actually thought Kittle was going to be a wide receiver or tight end one this year over Kelsey if he stayed healthy. He had a higher ceiling. Of, right. And because of it. right. So I, I think because of that, I think you still we'll see what they do with the quarterback too if they if they keep Garoppolo or trade him. Um but again the 49ers can't keep their team healthy. Um I, I don't know who their athletic trainer is, but um Maybe they need to hire the Chargers athletic trainer and just puncture people's lungs. <laughs> um, just to um, somebody that I'd be worried about this week. I know I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit. It's it's Terry McLaurin. Um, oh, yeah. You just took that right out of way, right out of my mouth, man. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me why you're worried about Terry McLaurin. So you you on the surface, right? You you log on to ESPN, you you see, oh, McLaurin, he's he's facing the worst defense against wide receivers in in Seattle. Um, okay, so they're the worst defense. Let's let's fire them up. Um, That's so did you know misleading. That, did you know that Seattle's given up? Um, Let's let's take a look at how many points they've given up uh, the last five weeks. Three last week, 17, 17, 21 and 23. Um, that's not great uh, if you're if you're starting players against them. And then let's let's really drill in here. The last three weeks now, none of these offenses obviously are are great. They've played at Philly. They've played the Giants who had Colt McCoy and they had the Jets. But I mean, the Jets were the Jets offense was putting up some points. Um, you know, they, they had their three wideouts and Perriman, Mims and, and Crowder all playing. Um, they combined for 10 catches for 112 yards. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Giants week, their wide receivers combined seven catches for 64 yards. Philadelphia, nine catches for 46 yards. That's like nothing. Yep. They're, they're still the worst ranked defense against wide receivers. Um, but if Alex Smith isn't playing and you're, you're relying on Dwayne Haskins to get the ball to McLaurin, it, it'd be a ballsy sit. Um, but if you have somebody better, um, I, I would do it. Um, the Seahawks, while they are ranked on the season as the worst team in the NFL against receivers, in terms of how many fantasy points that they're, they're giving up over the last four weeks, they have given up the fewest fantasy points in the NFL to the receiver position at 21.3 fantasy points per game to all receivers. Uh, do you want to know yeah, what they, the, they, they haven't given up a touchdown to a wide receiver in five weeks? They're the only team in the last month that has not given up a touchdown to a wide receiver. Their yeah. line for the last four weeks 44 catches, 391 yards. That's, That's it. That's nothing. That's, That's nothing. literally nothing. So I would be... Jamal Adams came back and just like locked down. I would not, would not be excited to start Terry McLaurin this week at all. Um what are you what are you doing with Deontay Johnson? So let's we, we look we look at him and he got benched in the first half for drops. Um let's say he has a drop on the first series this week. Do you think they put him back on the bench and how much confidence do you have in starting him? Deontay Johnson got benched. He played like what 49% of snaps? I, yeah, I he, don't... he got he got benched the entire first half after the second drive because he had three drops. He finished. He only played 28 snaps. He was in a 49% of plays. I don't. I'm not excited to play Deontay. I mean, you couple that with the fact that over the last month, the Bengals are giving up the second fewest fantasy points per game to receivers at 24. 
So like, I I don't want to play Deontay, but at the same time, you do. I feel like you, he's, ha- you have to. If he plays, and he's going to play, as long as he doesn't go out there and drop the first two catches that are thrown to him, as long as that is not what happens, he's going to have double-digit targets. He Like he is. Yeah, I, I would start Deontay Johnson with confidence. You know, even, yeah. if, even though he only played half the game, he still had seven targets in that game. I, obviously, you know, he dropped three of the first four balls that he th- got thrown. But since week nine, his targets are 10, 11, 16, 13, 12. Um, and then obviously the seven, seven pointer this week, uh, or sorry, the seven targets this week. Um, I, I still think he's a, you know, they're going to be short passes and you hope he breaks one. He's, yep. you know, James Robinson against, uh, uh, against Buffalo. That would have been his touchdown, but they put James Washington in, um, that when he had the, the like seam route for the touchdown that, that, that would have been Deontay. So um, I still think you got to start him. I understand your skeptability or skepticism. If you don't, if you have better options, okay, go for it. But um, I, I, he's still, still a must start. All right. Let's talk about a couple more fringy players. Um, fringy. G- guys that, uh, you know, kind of riding the roller coaster right now. Um, one that comes to mind for me is Corey Davis. Corey Davis had a whopping three targets last week against Jacksonville, turned him into 34 yards or three catches for 34 yards, finished with 2.9 fantasy points. The week before against Cleveland had 12 targets, 11 catches, 182 yards and a score for 30 fantasy points. So you go from 30 fantasy points to three overnight against the uh, Jags. Who are giving up the what seventh most fantasy points to receivers, and that's all you drop is three fantasy points. Um, this week, Tennessee has the Lions, who are giving up the second most. So you go from the seventh most to the second most fantasy points per game to receivers at fifty three. Um, you and I talked. We preview. We previewed. Well, we did our starts of the week, and what my quarterback start of the week was Tannehill. It was basically every titan because i knew that they were just going to drop points uh on the jags um, yeah we also didn't know if aj brown was playing at that point right a little bit yeah, that's that's true why, yeah i, I was mean, hoping he would, if he would have sat oh my god Corey davis but he didn't yeah and the Corey davis line was what it was um you got to figure aj brown is going to start again here do you see the same sort of game script happening where they just get up huge and lean on Derrick Henry to finish with 200 yards and multiple touchdowns and Corey Davis how, is just left in the dust. Yeah. How can that not be your expectation? Right. I mean, I, I, AJ Brown's a more explosive wide receiver than him. Um, he's playing. Uh, I, I think it's a, I think Corey Davis is a tough start. Like somebody as an example that would rather start over him would be Nelson Aguilar. Uh, yeah. You know, like you're you're taking the matchups into account um, and game script and just knowing what the tight or yeah, what the Titans do is they're going to they're going to pound Detroit into submission and then it's going to be over. <laughs> and Johnny Smith is playing again, too. So it's just somebody else um, there to soak up targets. Granted, he only had two uh, against the Jaguars, but I mean, they just got up big and they leaned on Derrick Henry. I'm afraid that that's what they're going to do again this week. Um, and then the next receiver, um, that I'm wondering what your thought is on is actually Cole Beasley, another one of those fringy type receivers. Um, as you mentioned earlier, our concerns for Josh Allen this week, the Broncos are currently seventh against receivers, um, in the last four weeks, only giving up. 29 and a half fantasy points per game two receivers um got buffalo this week are you worried at all about cole beasley um the guy has been an absolute target machine and i mean yeah. target machine i mean he's had double digit targets in each of the last two games and three of the last four do you think that he's able to turn it on against denver yeah, it'll be interesting because uh, uh, talking about Vic Fangio and what he does, you know, he's he's going to try to take away Diggs at all costs. And so, 
does that open things up for Beasley working on the other side of the field? It's possible. Or maybe Gabriel Davis. Um, I, uh, that's tough. Uh, I've not looked at the weather forecast for Denver. That would be my first thought is look at that. Make sure it's not going to snow. Um, yeah, I mean, Beasley's, a, he's been a wide receiver too all year. Um, 22, 22 wide receiver on the year. Um, yeah, he's had a couple stinkers in there, but, um, you know, the weather forecast you, you, you for chase, chase targets. Denver's weather ca- forecast for a Saturday football game at 3.30 in the afternoon is 44 degrees and mostly sunny. So, I, not so bad. I, I think you can start him um, and and you'll be okay. I don't think he has a super high floor, but with but with how how much the Bills throw the ball and don't give a crap about Singletary or Zach Moss on the ground. Um, because of that, I think he's going to have enough targets to be fine. All right. And then um, putting it all together, uh, this is going to help out one of our league makes. Uh, Brian wants to know out of Beasley, Corey Davis, and Jeff Wilson, who do you start? I mean, if Mostert isn't playing, I think that's the f- the for sure answer uh, is is Jeff Wilson. Um, if if Mostert does play, um, if Mostert, Mostert plays, are you playing Beasley or da- or Corey Davis? I'm probably playing Beasley for the floor. Yeah. Yeah. If Mostert plays, then Jeff Wilson is not in my fantasy football roster in the semis of the playoffs. Uh, If Mostert does not play, it is absolutely Jeff Wilson. Hands down uh, every day and twice on Sunday. And it Um, might be Jeff Wilson, even if Mostert does play. But I, I, I mean, I would not be surprised to see him outscore the other two. Um, But I, I don't think you can do that. Do you have any concern about Jarek McKinnon or Tevin Coleman? No. Tevin Coleman rushed two times for negative 11 yards in uh, the 49ers week 13 loss to the Bills. And Good Jarek, Lord. Jarek McKinnon played two offense or excuse me. Jarek McKinnon played zero offensive snaps and seven special team snaps in week 14 <laughs> against Washington. I am not worried at all about Jarek McKinnon or Tevin Coleman or anybody else. Tevin Coleman uh, had two snaps in week 14. So it's just, they're not it. It's going to be the Jeff frickin Wilson show of all people. And it's going to be glorious if Mostert misses. The only thing that I'm a little bit nervous about is that, I mean, the guy's gonna have to rotate out. So hopefully he doesn't get a touchdown sniped, which honestly could have happened anyways by a Brandon Ayuk end around if we're being honest about how that offense works. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it Just more advice for Brian. If he's listening, one of the three, three, uh, I just looked at his roster. I mean, he's got Noah fan. I was saying he's got Zach Ertz on his team just to talk about tight ends. Um, if Kyle Rudolph doesn't play, I think I'd rather start Irv Smith over both of them. Um from a from a matchup perspective, um, I, I think Irv Smith will outpoint Ertz for sure. Um, Noah Fant um, is a is anybody's guess what he's going to do on a weekly basis. Um, so just throwing that out there as a as a potential. If Rudolph doesn't play, um, I'd rather have Irv Smith than than Fant probably. Yeah, Irv Smith last week against Tampa, four targets, four catches, sixty three yards, and a score. 14 and a half fantasy points and half PPR. Um, <sighs> it was and, long. And Noah, and Noah Fant just didn't. I mean, he went off the field sick. And it wasn't yeah. COVID related. Just no, he, he left in the first. He went he left sick, put up a zero burger against me, and I still lost the matchup just because my team <laughs> crapped the bed. But hey, you know, it's fantasy football. 
Debo played one snap, got hurt after he ran nine yards. But I talked about it last podcast. I don't need to dwell on yeah, the misery you, you crap, of... You, you crapped the bed while Fant couldn't play because he was crapping his pants. There we go. 